Pillar posts versus response posts. Which one works better? Now, I use terminology from income school there of pillar post, response post, and they also have staple posts. And I know sometime in the last few months they kind of changed it. They might not be doing pillar or staple. Uh, but ultimately, we can kind of water it down into long form blog posts you know, that are gonna be like comprehensive guides with three, four, or 5,000 words, maybe more, or short form posts that maybe only have 1,000 words or less, or maybe a little bit more, you know, so let's just say plus or minus 500, 1,000 plus or minus 500, uh, but their purpose is just to satisfy direct search intent for a specific query. Which one works better? All right. And, you know, I, I got to say, mention Income School because uh, I have a lot of respect for them in all my years of Internet marketing experience and building businesses through Internet marketing experience or through Internet marketing, uh, which dates back to 09 when I started an e-commerce business, sold that in 2012. And then largely from 2012 to 2020, building offline businesses, home service businesses that I would largely grow rapidly through online marketing uh, with all of my experience in that field and in that space, I think that Income School has a awesome, effective, time-tested approach to content marketing. And I'm applying a lot of their principles that they teach to what I'm doing for my $200,000 content investment. So, um, you know, I got this video here spending $200,000 in the next three months on content. You know, do keep in mind that I spend a lot more than that. Yeah, or I shouldn't say a lot. Yeah, a lot more than that I, that I spend on ads. Uh, on paid traffic and advertisements, I'm spending about $30,000 a day, actually averaging a little bit more than $30,000 a day. So, you know, while I am sinking a lot of money into organic content, in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, in the grand scheme of my business, it's not a huge investment. It is big. It is a huge investment in absolute numbers, but relatively to the business, uh, it is not. But anyways, I'm applying a lot of their principles. I am not in their paid course or program but from what I can see on their YouTube channel in the insight and expertise they share there, I would have no hesitation recking, recommending you to their paid course or program if you are serious um, you know, about getting into building a niche or authority website and really need some guidance. Okay, so you know, let's just kind of talk about the two forms of content. I kind of already covered this, but long form going to be 3,000 plus words, um, going to have some custom graphics. Uh, a lot of text in there. I will say on the custom graphics for the ones that I'm doing for my content investment, I'm actually spending more money on custom graphics than I am on actual content writing. I'm not using any stock imagery. I'm not using any stock icons or anything like that. All custom graphics, custom illustrations, some photorealistic rendering, spending a lot of money on graphics. Uh, I believe that that is going to be a key factor in what I'm doing. I'm gonna have some pros and cons tables Overall, just a long, comprehensive piece. Probably going to have a table of contents. Or not probably, but uh, most likely will have that table of contents in there. Versus the short form, 1,000 plus or minus 500 words, just satisfying the search intent for that direct query. Let's look at an example here of a pillar piece. And I typed in golden retriever training and decided to find one from there. And I found this one right here. Um, it's not loaded. I guess it's got a lazy load installed on the site. But you can see it's got thousands of words on here. And look at this. When you click these things, you get, you know, just on these little toggles, you get thousands of words right in here. I mean, there's probably a thousand words in that toggle. There's probably another thousand words in that toggle, right? Like there is just so much content stuffed in here. This is a true pillar piece. And it's ranking pretty well for Golden Retriever training. Right. And in my experience, what I'm noticing here about these pillar pieces is that they rank faster. My pillar pieces are ranking faster than my response pieces and they get countless keyword rankings. So to kind of give you an example here, we've published about a hundred of these response posts on my website and tracking them in SEM rush maybe only about a quarter of them, say 25 of them, just rough numbers, but about a quarter of them are actually showing up for their intended target keyword. The rest of them just aren't even indexed for that target keyword. They're indexed and showing up on my site if we just did like a, if we did a site colon mysite.com slash whatever, they will show up, but for the actual target keyword, 
Oh, not going to target. I was going to type in target keyword, not target.com, but for the actual target keyword, they're not even indexing for it. Now, the ultimate guides in our pillar posts, which uh, they're taking more time to publish than I would like. We've got quite a few of them written at this point, but I think we've only got nine of them published. They show up instantly. They're all indexing right into the top 50 for their target keyword, and they are some big keywords. I'm talking all of them have search volume over 10,000 a month. Some of them are up close to about 30,000. We have some that are above 25,000, uh, some very close to 30. So yeah, so what I'm, what I'm seeing here in my experience is we're publishing the content and these pillar posts are ranking very high quickly or indexing very high quickly for their target keywords. Basically, all the ones that we've published index right into the top 50. Uh, most of them at this point are on page two. We haven't gotten a page one or yet, but they're all on they're all in the top 50, most of them on page two, I would say in the top 20. So they're doing very good. Whereas our response posts and our shorter posts here, they're not even indexing for their target keywords, even though they're targeting very, very low competition, low search volume keywords, they're not even popping up in the top 100. So we're getting much better results faster with these long form pillar pieces. Second to that, these pillar pieces rank for infinitely more keywords. With these little short pieces, you're going to you know, rank for the target, or hopefully rank for your target keyword. In my case, we're not even indexing for those yet. Uh, but you're going to index for your target keyword and maybe a few others. Pillar pieces are going to pick up countless keywords that you didn't even think about or didn't even try to incorporate into it uh, just on kind of semantic indexing. So let's look at this here by popping the zigzag dog site into SEM Rush, and you can see clearly their um, keyword was golden retriever training. I mean, that's what they're indexing highest for and getting the most traffic for. Let's switch that to exact URL, by the way. It'll probably still show the same thing. That's weird. That's weird that it didn't do that, that it's not doing, not showing anything for exact URL. Um, was it a glitch? No, that is weird. No, we don't want subdomain. Let's just go back to subfolder. That's what it directed. That's what it's taking it as. Possibly because it doesn't have like a little extension like that or something after it. I don't know. But anyways, uh, here are all the keywords that page is showing up for. Golden Retriever training, Golden Retriever puppy training, etc. And you can see 217 others, right? So it's picking up a ton of other keywords along the way. And in addition to ranking faster, these pillar pieces are picking up so many more keywords and getting a ton more traffic. And if we look at the overview, oops, that's probably not the best way. What am I trying to do here? Where am I at? Let me... Trying to get back to the screen that comes behind this. Let me go to domain overview and then pop that URL in. Here we go. All right, so here we go. We can see this page is not that old. It was only published in June 2021 uh, and it's already ranking for Golden Retriever training. So where is it? I mean, it's pretty far down the page. Not, I guess, what is it? One, it's. Showing up in the fourth organic, you know, kind of non-snippet piece, which is pretty damn good. Actually, that's really good for just coming up here in, you know, relatively it's August, June, July, August, three months. Like, that's incredible. Showing up as number two uh, is what SEM Rush is tracking it about, is tracking it at. Uh, so, yeah, you can see the power of the pillar piece there. Capturing all those little keywords and going on here and capturing so much more traffic. So then let's just kind of go back to the whiteboard here on my other notes. Um, yeah, and it's hard to duplicate, okay? Creating a piece like this is hard to do, right? Compare that to or contrast that with a response post where it's easy to duplicate. It's easy for anybody to hire a writer for a thousand words and get it. And then subsequently, it's easy to satisfy that search intent in other mediums, right? So if you had, let's just take a what would be a, kind of like a response style subtopic here. 
what are golden retrievers bred for, right? In text, it's easy to duplicate. And it's also easy to duplicate this by simply making another YouTube video for it or making a Pinterest post for it or a TikTok video. It's easier to answer that direct search intent in another medium. When you're creating this comprehensive guide, it is hard to duplicate that or hard to duplicate this or hard to create something as comprehensive as this in another medium. Therefore, you have less competition. So while it might take a lot more effort and money to create these comprehensive guides, I see it as they're going to stand the test of time longer. They're going to get more traffic. They're going to stand the test of time longer because somebody can't create a competing piece with this as easily. Whereas when you're just doing a response post, somebody could either write about it, somebody could make a video about it, somebody could make a TikTok about it. I don't even use TikTok. Um, somebody could make it. Pinterest board about it or something. I don't know. There's other ways to serve it. When you're doing an ultimate guide like this, this ultimate guide is really the only way to create it. There's really no other way that you can do it, right? It's hard to duplicate that. So those are the reasons why I'm leaning more towards pillar posts. How has my strategy changed? Let's talk about it. Well, um, rather than doing this, let's just type in golden retriever training right so let's let's just say i'm doing keyword research and i have an awesome video on keyword research i will put a link to it below and i'm getting good at doing the point below <laughs> i'll put a link to it below but let's just kind of look at it here um, and how i'm kind of adapting my keyword research right so we go to the questions here and I do my keyword research, and I ultimately make a list of all of my keywords, I'm going to merge these together as much as I can. I'm going to look for all of these keywords and just try to rope them into one piece, right? So I might create the comprehensive guide on golden retriever training. We might have a subsection on how to train a golden retriever puppy. We might have a section on how to potty train a golden retriever. Um, those are ambiguous. How to train a golden retriever to attack, right? So rather than doing these as individual little posts, I'm gonna pull as many of these together as I feel are applicable and lump them in to create ultimately that comprehensive guide. So what I have been doing was one comprehensive guide and then maybe 10 to 15 supporting pieces is what I call them. I don't call them response posts internally, you know, among my own team, we call them supporting content, uh, although they're basically like response posts. Rather than doing 10 to 15 pieces, we're trying to lump them all together and trying to incorporate, like, let's just say 10 of these into this, in addition to what we were going to have, and then maybe only doing two or three. Only stuff that does not tie into our comprehensive ultimate guide. So that's what I'm doing and that's why I'm doing it and that's how I'm changing my strategy for long form versus short form content. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below.